Peter Brown. Brad. I understand that you're a fan of classic games. You could say that. Uh, well, you're in luck, because I have 40 of them for you here, plus two. How does that work? <laughs> 40 classic games plus two bonus titles uh -huh. uh, contained on what they are calling the Sega Genesis Mini. Yeah. Which we have right here in a box. Um, unfortunately, we only have 15 minutes to play. <laughs> <laughs> per embargo, we can only capture 15 minutes of video from this thing. Yep. So I don't think we're going to get through 40 games today. That's all right. Uh, but uh, yeah, they set this thing over. Uh, you've got one here that you've been fiddling with a little bit. Yeah, for about a week now. Uh, and we've got this one here that I intentionally have not opened yet. So we can open it right now. <laughs> all right. What do we got here? You've been through this. Tell me what I'm getting into. What in the world is this? This is a USB power brick. Oh, wow. But you can also power this off your TV. Huh. Your TV's got a USB port. Most of these, uh, most of these, uh, is w first of all, I started to say like this <laughs> series of classic consoles, even though like every one of them is made by a different company. Sure. Like what do we got? NES Classic, SNES Classic, there's a Nintendo, like the PlayStation Classic, there's yep. a Commodore. Konami's making the PC the, Engine the Turbo, Turbo Graphics ones. stuff is yeah. coming out, but most of them don't have a power brick, right? That's true. They, so, they pretty like, much stop including those. That is a yeah. tiny little USB brick right there. If you don't have like 20 already from your cell phone and all the other stuff. Uh, what do you think of the controller? Okay, so three button controller. Yeah. What's going on here? Uh, you mean why isn't it a six button Where's controller? Where's the other three? <laughs> well, okay, you look at it this way, right? The library of games on the system, right? A lot of them are the older titles before the six button controller ever came out. Okay. But also, if you look at a lot of Genesis games, there's very few that really benefited from the six buttons. Yeah, what is it? Fighting games, basically? Fighting, fighting games, two? pretty much. I want to say... Uh, Champions. Ranger X or X Ranger, I forget the name of it. But like, yeah, like random games here or there. Yeah. There are solutions to play them on a three button controller, and some of those games are on this system. So, yeah, if you're going to play Street Fighter 2, you're going to have to hit start if you want these buttons to become either punches or kicks. Cool. Yeah, but right. you know what? Honestly, in terms of the feel and the performance, it's been great. Pretty pretty authentic, you think? It, well, like, authentic, you know, I it's mean. It's been a while for me. I don't know about you. I mean, I play you Genesis on a regular it. basis, but yeah. I, I use. Uh, specifically, Analog Interactive's new controller, the okay. M30, the wireless yeah. one, the 2.4 gigahertz model. It's so good. Really like those things. Yeah, but this honestly, it feels great. It performs really well. And for so me, good. the D-pad is always really important, and you can both feel the sort of switches, the activation of the different directions, yeah. really well. Yeah, it's not bad. And it's got a bit of texture to it too, which is pretty cool. And yeah. like in game, I'm not getting erroneous inputs on the D-pad when I'm doing stuff. And so often that's a problem with third-party controllers. Yeah. Um, Retrobit is a company that licensed controllers through Sega and made them uh, earlier this year. And Sega is saying, if you want the six-button controller for this, buy the Retrobit USB Genesis controller. But these are made by Sega. These are not made by Retrobit. Okay. And their controllers are good, not great. These are great. Okay. Uh, wow. Peter Brown's seal of approval on these controllers. <laughs> and they're USB, so I guess you can plug it into a PC? Uh, yeah, you should be able to. Yeah, I mean, certainly you can plug in any USB controllers you have. Like, I was playing games with a Saturn Oh, USB okay, controller. So, so anything that has six buttons, yes. you can just go. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Also, worth, worth noting. Crucially for my nostalgia, you get the good pumping sound on the face buttons. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what I remember out of these things. Yeah, right in the mic. Uh, okay, what is this? A USB cable, yep. uh, an HDMI cable. Instructions and the thing. The thing itself. All right, well, that was uh, one hell of an exciting unboxing, I guess. <laughs> Here you go. Um, so, <laughs> we have a timer loaded up. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to use our 15 minutes judiciously here. Uh, uh, do you want to pop it on and look at the menu real quick? Let's do it. I'll show you. Kind of we'll try to run down what is on this thing. Yeah. Uh, Jan, I'm going to rely on you to just keep us in check here. We can talk about a couple interesting uh, things as it pertains to like specific games. Um, first, okay. let's take in the music. Okay. So this is a song done by Yuzo Koshiro. You know, wow, okay. Uh, anyone who doesn't know, the composer of many mini games, but most notably Streets of Rage yep. uh, series. Yes, and Sh Revenge of Shinobi, one of my favorites. Oh yeah. This, uh, this song is made using songs from the games that are on this system. Oh, cool. So it's kind of sampled in that way. That's cool. Um, so yeah, the interface is as such. Um, there is a way, I don't remember offhand, uh, someone else was talking about it, where you can actually flip it and so you see the spines, okay. so you can see all the games. But you can come in here and change the language, and then if you back out, oh, wow. oh my goodness. That's cool. Oh, wow. You Box get the Japanese cover right in. Um, okay. Yeah, interesting to note that uh, some games obviously went by different names. Um, most notably would be 
Where is it? Uh, Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine becomes uh, Puyo Puyo okay. on this. So it even like changes the game entirely. Wow. Um, but is, so, is that the Super Shinobi that I see? Is that what that says? It is, yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the, anyway, like what I was going to say though about Monster World 4, so any of these games now are going to play in Japanese. So it actually switches to a ROM based on whatever you set the language to. Okay. But that game was never released in the US, although it's got an English translation when you're playing it in English. Okay. So that's pretty cool to note. Uh, they have changed some of the games in that respect uh, for this system. Is that a new localization, do you know? Like, uh, I think it was based on, uh, I think it maybe got like a virtual console translation. I'm probably okay. misrepresenting that. Or okay. maybe it was like a Sega Ages release that M2 also worked on. Okay. Um, Any other cool options in here to look at? Yeah, let's get back up Just there. Just interface. Oops. Let me change the language back. That's not the language. Oof. Nice. <laughs> Thought I was gonna have to try to remember I, my Japanese class from college. Totally guessing. I forgot what right. those ego. Um, so you've got the ability to stretch it if you okay. so wish. Um, don't know why you'd really want to do that. Uh, I guess the one example was mentioned by My Life in Gaming, who probably your readers are a little bit aware of, or viewers rather. Uh, one of the best sites on YouTube for covering this sort of stuff. The way that the pixels are interpolated for certain resolutions doesn't always work out uh, as you'd prefer. I don't want to get too technical with this. <laughs> but essentially, there is a reason why you might want the widescreen and have your TV squish it. This is an enthusiast matter. I'm so sorry. You might say. <laughs> so sorry. Um, they have the plain black border. Okay, good. They have these two weird ones. Good. Uh, black. Is that for me? That's pretty much it. Okay, so pretty bare bones. Yeah. Um, all right, so games on here. Games. Let's talk about... I guess I guess let's just play whatever you think is interesting in terms of emulation or... Yeah. Or rarity or any of that stuff. Well, you talked about rarity. Tetris yeah. doesn't sound like a rare game, but it only four copies were released. I think are only four in existence now or something like that. It's worth about $10,000 if you okay. have... It. It's only in Japan. And Not it was, anymore. No. Through a sweepstakes or something yeah. like that. Yeah, so that one, I was going to say, um, it is, what is it? Darius and Tetris are the two right. bonus titles. So Darius, back, do you know so. the story about Darius being Not on here? Really Really well, the story is somewhat of a mystery. So Darius was never released on the Sega Genesis. About okay. a year and a half ago, a hobbyist whose name I'm forgetting, uh, you know, hacker, uh, port software engineer, was porting the game to Genesis, and he was sharing his progress on forums and putting up gameplay videos. Where did where does the game originate? Uh, arcade, okay. Saturn. I think there's also a PC Engine port. Okay. Um, I, I think his port was based on the arcade version though, which obviously had a, a super widescreen appearance in the arcade been adjusted for this. Okay. Anyway, his work disappeared off the forums where oh. he had been posting. Most of it will be the videos. And here it is on this system, okay. which of course leads to, you know, assume that there's some relationship there. Yeah. They got to him. Sega won't really talk about it. No. Oh, okay. Sega won't really tell me the story. And, Interesting. And um, I think it's just safe to assume that there's been some sort of business agreement. That's just an assumption on my part. Um, they just saw what he was doing and liked it enough to maybe loop him in? You know, M2, they make a series of games called M2 Shot Triggers, like they convert uh, arcade games that never got home ports okay. to home consoles, and I think this is just right up their alley, and they probably thought, what a really special opportunity for this product if we're going to be involved. So M2 basically is a Japanese studio that does a ton of emulation stuff, and like kind of for hire, is that right? Yes, they've done a ton of work recently, um, specifically, well, forever with Sega, but recently they've been working with Konami a bunch. I believe they're working on the PC Engine TurboGrafx stuff they're doing. They okay. did the Castlevania collection. I will say their work here is good. It's not flawless. Some of their stuff, like their 3D uh, classics on the 3DS, where they take uh, old Genesis games, break them down, and add 3D support and a bunch of oh, other sure, yeah. options. Those things like go way above and beyond what you would expect from a normal port. M2 is a really solid technical foundation, but when it comes to like the special features you'd expect, it doesn't quite have them okay. at large. Uh, so to get back to the main menu, you hold down. Uh, I thought it was yeah the start button for a while and then just let it go. What we got on the well, we could get to we the could, buttons once we've exhausted our yeah, allotment. Yeah, it, it's of fairly straightforward. But what, what game would you like to see um, played? Gosh. Uh, I guess maybe something super familiar, just to like kind of get an idea of how good the emulation is. Yeah. Oh, ah, ghouls and ghosts. Oh okay. yeah. I just like I'm or Alex kid. Like I'm just seeing stuff that I played back then. And, yeah. And was into. I remember like this is one of the first games I saw at my friend's house when he got a Genesis. And all I had was Nintendo. Yeah. And it was just like. Especially you know, because like, the Nintendo holy shit. <laughs> version of Ghosts yes. and Goblins is like. Uh, yes. So it was painful. like oh my god. Like video games can be more. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, by and large, you know, um, this thing feels really good. As someone who plays Sega Genesis on a regular basis, I'm not playing this thing and thinking like, oh god, they really screwed this up. Uh, again, to cite My Life in Gaming, who does really excellent work when it comes to comparing and contrasting uh, original hardware with aftermarket devices, they were able to pinpoint some minor differences that I think, to someone who's, uh, oh yeah, will nitpick, will say, oh, this isn't worth it. But really, this isn't for that sort of person? Yeah. This system, you know, this is really for the person who wants to just play Sega Genesis games and Sega can say, hey, we put out a good product. You know, uh, no one's gonna jump down M2's throat for what they've done right. here. Right. Like this is for somebody seeing this on the end cap at Target and saying, hey, I remember the Sega Genesis. Yeah. This thing is cheap enough, I'll buy this. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, Why that, not? that was the, the At Games flashback, which everyone hated, and that thing probably still sold as well. But at least now, no one's gonna be there to be like, well, actually, this thing's a piece of trash and you don't know any better. Um, this thing is, you know, it's pretty good. Like definitely good enough for the non and yes. kind of hardcore and good enough, good enough for me and I'm yeah. someone who, you know, we were talking before we were shooting, like modifying Genesis consoles to do certain things. Like, even I'm happy with this. I mean, you've, I you've, got, a, you've got a house full of CRTs and circuit boards, so <laughs> <laughs> if this passes your test, then yeah. Yeah, this seems okay. Yeah. Um, well, I won't... Uh, We'll put you through the ringer with this game too much. Well, I'm not dying though. <laughs> surviving. This, this series is uh, yeah sadistic, I guess I would say. Let's check out uh, uh, Castlevania, perhaps. Okay. Uh, Pretty standard like save state type stuff, I assume. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, Wily Wars is another cool game that's on here because that was only on the U.S. in uh, the Sega Channel. Okay. It was never actually sold. It was in Europe. Yeah, I was just reading about that game recently. It's uh, what is it? One, two, and three. Uh, I've, yeah, one, two, and three, All and the board. graphics are like redone. Yeah, and, um, yeah it looks kind of weird. It kind of re resembles Mega Man Seven, which I don't love the mm. aesthetic of. Okay. I would like to hear all is I assume the music is all is pretty similar. I mean, it's not arranged. I'm not an expert in Mega Man music. I, I, I didn't uh, catch anything I, off. I love I love the Mega Man Two soundtrack. Yeah. Kind of I want to hear the music from that version. <laughs> well, we can jump into that after. Cool. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I missed this. Is this Blood? Castlevania Bloodlines. Yeah, okay. Yeah. This is one of those games that was made at Konami, and then some of the people who worked on it, as far as I, if, unless I'm getting the timeline wrong, broke off to go create Treasure, right? Oh, wow. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, so Treasure is I, mostly ex Konami people. Huh. I yeah. didn't know the origin of Treasure. Yep. You ever been to their office? Uh, no, but I've heard it's incredibly sterile. It's tiny. <laughs> it's a tiny little basement <laughs> office. Yeah, I think we did a shot there before I was on staff, so a long time ago, and they were like, it's just white walls. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a yes. small white walled it office. Very small. Yeah. Um, has this Castlevania ever appeared anywhere else? Like, there's. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to get them all mixed up because, like, maybe there's Dracula X, but then there's kind of weird half remake, half port right. type versions of that. On yeah, I mean, most, platforms. most like, recently it was on um, the Castlevania collection. Okay, but I mean, back it's, in the day, was this Genesis only? or This was Genesis only okay. back in the day, yes. Um, and it's a really good one. Uh, you know, it's one of those that I... I was a Genesis kid by choice, and I regretted that choice as soon as I went over to my friend's house who had a Super Nintendo, but I think I just didn't get the right opportunities to understand the breadth of what was available on Genesis, yeah. for whatever reason. And uh, once I finally got back into it, this was one of those games that was like, oh my god, how did I not know about this? Because I like Castlevania on the NES, and I had an NES before Genesis for sure, but yeah, this one is just so good. From the soundtrack to even the... The different like special effects that are used in levels, um, it, it really feels like, uh, I mean, better than any of the Super Nintendo Castlevania. I was, was going to say opinion. this, this or Castlevania Four for you. I like Four a lot, but yeah. it's it's mostly a remake or a reimagining of the first game, and sure. it just feels a little bit basic in some regards. This one is surprising, and it's you know th there's like no censorship really, like it's gory, it's uh, yeah you know, the soundtrack. Oh man, I, Castlevania soundtracks are all pretty good, like. Some are amazing. This is one of the amazing ones, I think. Um, and, you know, to talk about that, like, it's great to see that this, or hear that this system hasn't completely mangled the Genesis audio. Sure. Um, there is no definitive Genesis sound. Every Even within the Model 1 design, there are various motherboard revisions. Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, I had no uh, idea. So the, the community in the, the Genesis community right now is actually... There's this program led by this guy Artemio called MD Fourier, where they are using analysis software to really catalog all the different uh, audio behaviors of the various Genesis systems. And through that, we've realized that yeah, like there are—I th say we—I just an onlooker, but yeah, it's come to light that 
we knew there were some differences, mm -hmm. but it's really drastic. And uh, so there's a huge community of people who are trying to create boards to upgrade and get that best Genesis sound. Wow. This is pretty good. This falls within the range okay. of what you'd, what you'd hope for. And what most people aim for is the Model 1 Genesis with the VA3 motherboard. Um, I would love to see a comparison to that. I don't own one of those, unfortunately. Is there any way to tell which one you have without opening it up? Um, so if, if, you have the model, it. if you have the Model 1, right, there's the version that has the high definition graphics up top. Okay. Uh, or there's nothing, like, you know, in the top circle. You can see it on this system yeah. here. If it doesn't have that, um, it's a later revision of that and likely not that great. Um, but if you have one of the earlier ones that has that, you can still get kind of a funky uh, version of the Model 1 with kind of crappy audio. Yeah. So what you want to do is look at the back, look for the extension port that's actually like a, a serial or a, a parallel port that you would like add devices to. Um, if it has that and it says it, high definition graphics, you have a pretty good shot of getting one of the earlier revisions. <laughs> this is amazingly imprecise. But even if you even if you have one of those, right, the only way to get stereo out of your Genesis is to get it from the headphone port. Well, the headphone port on pretty much all Model 1s has like peaking issues and distortion, so okay. again, there's no definitive. There's, there's no perfect Genesis. There's no there. perfect Genesis, but you know, compared to other aftermarket offerings, this one is pretty good, if not better than cool. all the other ones that Flashback put out, for sure. Uh, shall we... let's see... three minutes. Really? We got time. Oh god. Have you got time to jump into Mega Man? Yes. How about you do it? I want you to do it. Hopefully. I want you to tell me okay. how it feels. Sure. Uh, I mean, I am no Mega Man expert, but... Uh, Are you interested see. in this on a personal level? Yeah, like, kinda, having one of these? Yeah. I mean, more academically, just like, uh. it's good to know how these sorts of products turn out. Sure. From, just from a kind of a recommendation standpoint, but uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, there are so many different ways to play games of this era at this point. I just love it for being a, like a little model of a Genesis. Yeah, it's cool. Like all of these have a kitschy appeal to them. Yeah. Of just like here's every console from my youth in <laughs> tiny form. Exactly. I wish I could just buy the shell. To be quite honest yeah. with you, like sure. I would totally buy those. Yeah. I did buy the uh, like on Amazon Japan. You can get the the fake Sega CD and the fake 32X that plugs into this thing. No kidding. Have you seen that stack? No. Yeah, so in Japan, they're literally releasing relatively sized models that you can snap it all together. They huh. don't add any functionality, they just that's, look cool. That's, that's cool. Yeah, I'm not gonna put the 32X on, but the Model 1 Sega CD is, I love the way that thing looks. And that, that definitely illustrates what the actual appeal of these things is, yeah. which is just, you know. Uh, I'm tempted to sit here and watch. Uh, we got a minute and 58 seconds. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. And of course, it's going to sound different too because it's tuned through the Genesis uh, audio hardware, which is, I believe, an FM synthesizer and yeah, PCM kind of audio Yamaha as well. Chip, right? uh, the Yamaha tw uh, 2612 right. processor. There's also the Yamaha 3438, if I'm remembering correctly, which is slightly different. And again, people have different feelings on which one is the best. The purest one is the 2612, but you know, the 3438 is cleaner for some people. Fair. Getting in the weeds. <laughs> oh wow, okay, I got a little, a little railing drawing over top of the sprite. Okay, cool. Wow, this this is a nice looking version of Mega Man 2. Yeah. Naturally I went with the canonical first boss, Airman. <laughs> oh boy, I hate yeah. stupid spikes. They're just gonna keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna it's gonna have to it. go at some point. Yeah. Got a minute, Brad. Oh boy. Oh god. Whoa! A little hitch there. Just don't stop for nothing. <laughs> Just eat the damage. I'm not gonna make it to here, man. This there. is cool. I don't think I don't think I've ever seen this version because, like you said, oh, really? it's not widely yeah. available here. Yeah. Uh, Mega Man 2 is a hell of a game. I might have to check out some more of this. <laughs> Um, yeah, it seems like they've uh, oof, really run out of time here. Uh, I'll save that. 20. 20 seconds. Uh, I'm not going to make it to Airman. Ah! At least I got the little cheat like cheat, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, no, sound when, uh -oh, no sound when you pick up the, the health, though. That's bullshit. Oh, yeah, that's oh, kind of suck. It's kind of, you can kind of hear it oh. just a little bit. Jan, just cut it whenever. <laughs> Man, all right. Uh, um, There's going to be uh, more gameplay on GameSpot. We're actually okay. cutting a montage of all 42 games wow. under the time limit. Okay. So you'll only get a few seconds of each. I don't but know why, we'll do that. why they... I don't know why. <laughs>
15 minutes. But yeah, a little, we, little we, limiting for this many games, but... Yeah, I mean, I guess um, we can't really show more than that until the thing comes out. Yeah, there's a second embargo at time of release. September um, 19th. Do you know how much this costs offhand? 80 human bones. 80. That's, well, that's about in line with not the bad. others, right? Yeah, and you get two controllers the, that you can use on other devices. Unlike the classic systems, right, that give you like the, the Wii controller style plug. Nintendo ones were about the same? Or like 100? Oh, no, they were less than 100. Oh, really? I don't remember the exact price point. I want to say they were 70 or 70? 80 bucks. Okay, yeah. of course, the PlayStation is like 20 bucks now. Yeah. <laughs> Get it in a box of Cracker Jacks if you look around. Um, yeah, it seems like a pretty good lineup, you know? It's 42 games. Yeah, there's some uh, exclusives per territory. Okay. Um, like, I think the Japan model has, like, Musha, for example, a shooter okay. that a lot of people love. The Asia version, the one for, like, uh, Korea and I think Taiwan, that has like Alien Soldier on it mm. and Shining Force 2 and you know it's uh, it, I wish they all had all the same games so yeah. I didn't feel so torn Sure, but, uh, but yeah make sure to check that out before cool. you order one um, oh last thing uh, I don't know if you want me to yank it off of ours or do yours it. you can I, ASMR it too do you want to oh, do I can, it <laughs> I don't know if I can get a mic close enough to this thing I love doing this it's my favorite thing in the world Ah, okay. Now we can play this thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the cartridge slot. Yep. Is a cartridge slot. Yep. Is there a connector in there? In Japan, you can actually get uh, a collection of, I think, like 20 mini cartridges. And uh, I believe they also come, like, framed, like, suspended in, like, a shadow box sort of situation. But you okay. can take them out. And I'd want that. But I think it's very expensive. That's kind of, that's I think kind it's of like cool. a... A couple hundred dollars. That's kind of cool. Like also, I can confirm there's just nothing but flat plastic at the bottom of that cartridge slot. But hey, you can put whatever uh, you want in there. That's true. Anything that fits. Yeah, that's right. Um, does the volume slider actually do anything? No. Okay. <laughs> unless I unless I missed it, I'm pretty sure that's a no. Uh, there's also a door for the Sega CD to plug in on the bottom if, you know, that thing we were mentioning earlier. Yes. And they seem to have gone kind of all the way with this thing. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. That's that's impressive, especially after the just the whole ad games fiasco, uh, where they put out kind of a version of this. Yeah, that was very compromised. Yeah, I mean, I think and you, poor. you could probably still find that on the shelves at yeah. Walmart or something, and yeah. this will be right next to it at some point. Um, so don't don't confuse that for this. Yeah, disregard yeah. anything made by ad games, unfortunately. They haven't made a they haven't made a good product that stands up to I think the modern awareness of what retro games should be and how they should feel. Right. I think that worked when people well when the industry at large wasn't really trying to get that in people's hands and now that they are it's uh, the scrutiny is a bit higher. Standards have uh, have increased. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Uh, maybe maybe we'll come back and mess with this thing a little bit more once the shackles are off. Sure. And we could play some Land Stalker. <laughs> or, uh, wow, this is some tiny type here. Light Crusader, maybe the worst game on this system. Wow. Made by Treasure, oh, and man. I can't stand it. <laughs> oh, that's, that's depressing. It's like an, it's a really ugly, isometric, slow-paced, like, Western RPG. Huh. It's weird. Ugh. It's weird. Uh, what else we got on here? Road Rash 2. Hell yeah. This thing's got everything. I was playing that, and I was like, God, it's like 10 frames per second. And then like 20 minutes later, I was like, Oh, I still love this game. I don't care. <laughs> it's Road Rash. Still feels really good. Road Rash is. I'll be timeless. honest. Yeah. Road Rash is forever. Uh, thank you, Peter Brown. Thank you. This thing's coming out September 19th. All right. Look for it. <laughs>